go big and go to the bank big if you're sports betting. Go big and go home in the NBA playoffs. Go big and go on to the next round of the playoffs in Major League Baseball. Hello and welcome to Double AI, the podcast about sports analytics. And the double A's stand for Andrew and Ari. Hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> That's uh, Andrew Engel in San Diego. He's our data scientist. And Ari Kaplan in Chicago. He's our AI evangelist. And boy, do we have fun for you today because these guys have really nailed simulation and prediction, prediction modeling of Major League Baseball playoffs. We can go back just a couple of months ago when they previewed what could happen and literally the last day of the regular season played out that way. But we're going to jump ahead to the playoffs. So guys, I'm going to lay out the factors and then you guys are going to take it from there. One, we're going off, uh, we're simulating off performances of the team this year. Every regular season and playoff game since 1980 and uh, simulate that 100,000 times. Do that, Andrew, and you get, what's the lead story out of all of that? Well, I think there's two things. The first one is that really shocking news that the Dodgers are the favorite. Yeah. Although I would say the 538 projections in mine disagree a little bit. 538 came out and said they were the, the biggest favorites they'd ever seen. Oh, wow. The Dodgers are actually significant favorites, but the smallest favorites I've ever seen. Um, but I think the really lead is we have no idea what's going to happen. This three-game wild card series with everyone in it is going to lead to upsets. I mean, even the Dodgers, where I'm looking at and saying they have a 20% um, chance of winning, I see them with a 30% chance of losing in the wild card round. Um, everyone else is 35% or above. So it's wide open. Anything could happen. All right. Dodgers dominate or go out in the first round or anything could happen in this wild card round. Is that the way you see it as well? Yeah. It, it, you know, compounding it being a three game series versus some teams uh, having to sit out while wild cards have play ins. Um, you know, th these are neutral sites. So, you know, it's unclear that you have such a big home field advantage, except maybe in strategy. Um, all, you know, also, uh, you know, your, your pitchers end up getting uh, a little bit more overused than having to sit out one of the series. So having, you know, number four and five pitcher may play even more significantly. But yeah, having this three game playoffs for everybody regardless, uh, yeah, should, should have some upsets. And there are elements here we want to discuss. As we record this on Tuesday midday, Andrew, your twins are missing a key component. Well, they've been missing this key component for much of the season, but Donaldson's not on the wild card roster again, still having calf trouble. Um, it's a huge gap for a player that they had really brought in to try to put them over the top. And, and Ari, one of those teams that just got in there on the last day is also a team that's meriting attention. Yeah, well, a couple of them um, get coming in the, la the last uh, day or two. Um, you know, the, the Marlins are kind of interesting. The Reds, who were, you know, favored actually to be the number one seed, um, you know, were looking kind of grim for a while. But, you know, but both those teams, you cannot underestimate them. They, um, uh, you, you know, they had a really hot last couple of weeks. And, and that uh, factors in as well. Healthy players with uh, energy, players with uh, confidence. So I, you could look for both of them to actually have upsets. Yeah, I'm really fascinated by Atlanta and Cincinnati. You've got uh, the Reds' arms. I mean, usually it'd be the other way around, right? Traditionally, Cincinnati offense, Atlanta with the arms. Mm -hmm. But it's those three Reds starting pitchers against uh, Freddie, uh, what is it, Freeman and Ozuna have really swung the bat well, mm -hmm. especially the last month of the year. They're uh, Reds back in the playoffs for the first time in seven years, and the Marlins, you have to go back way back to 03, the last time the Marlins were anything at all. We give those guys credit for getting in there. And when they played the Cubs as well. Yeah. If, if you, so yeah. A, a rematch. Can we just acknowledge the Central? I mean, seven of the 16 teams came out of the Central. I, I mean, I think if, if you had polled us at the beginning of the season, none of us thought the Central was the dominant uh, best divisions. And it turned out to really control baseball. Um, 
really amazing to watch. There's great teams, both American League and National League Central. Well, there's a lot to talk about, and I think that's what makes it so unpredictable in the wild card round. Of the first round mashups, only one is intercluster, we'll call it. Um, and that's, that's fascinating to me. So, you know, it's, uh, we call that show and tell. Let's see who's good, right? Well, let, let's make it, it's an even bigger deal, right? Because they haven't seen these teams at all. This, is, this doesn't happen in baseball. Um, if I was going to criticize my simulation, it's that so many of the stats I need depend on the fact that the teams play one another and I can normalize across all of the teams. I can't normalize between the East and the Central and the West anymore. So stuff could be way off because of those problems. We just don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to watch. And uh, all right, teams are going, and scouting-wise, they're only going off of video that they could collect. Their scouts have not been to parks uh, over the last two months. Yeah, that, um, you know, I've always advocated for in-person scouting, but, you know, clearly you can't in this case. You know, video does not always record defense of all players or always get, you know, the perspective of bullpen sessions, things of that nature. You know, it is secondary to, you know, watching the actual game, but. Uh, you know, there, there are some uh, tactical things that could be missed by not being there in person. Yeah. Uh, note about that. Extra inning games are played normal. No uh, runner placed on second. Although, guys, I'd really like to see that in the wild card. And then, fellas, we're even within the abnormal times in which we live, there is abnormality here because of everything going on at once. Uh, Stanley Cup just finished. Tampa uh, champs. They've got the cup. Uh, NBA Finals just starting. NFL starting to level out some viewership that's uh, up for them. But the second big story right now, and this is overwhelming, is, uh, Andrew, this past month, an element of sports and entertainment had its best month ever. Could you explain that? Well, yeah. I, I mean, it's, again, it's a story we've been watching for a long time and trying to understand what people are doing for entertainment. But with the sports all coming back, we're just seeing um, insane amounts of money flowing into the sports betting market. Uh, the New Jersey sports bets, sports books, excuse me, uh, took in over $650 million in August, which is their best month ever. Um, and when you consider that those sports books weren't taking bets in person either, it's just astonishing. Well, and it's changing the perception and we need to catch up Las Vegas, it's Viva Las Jersey, not Viva Las Vegas, because uh, Jersey's really dominating. 667.9 million in bets in August. Also, Caesars has made a, uh, an over, well, a, a substantial offer, maybe a, perhaps an initial offer, to buy sports betting giant William Hill. What does that mean to the market? Well, I mean, it tells you how big Caesars thinks the sports betting market is, right? For them to want to actually purchase William Hill. Now, Caesars already has a relationship with William Hill. William Hill is doing a lot of their sports book for them. Um, but this is saying they want the entire organization. Um, it's an interesting decision because William Hill also works with other sports books um, and has a significant international uh, presence. It's also interesting because there's another, I think, private equity firm bidding for William Hill, which has offered more money, but there's a lot of suggestions that William Hill would be inclined to take the Caesars, bet, the Caesars bid just because Caesars has the right to get out of their relationship if they get sold to someone else. So it's a really interesting time, but clearly Caesars sees this as a huge part of their business going forward. NFL announcing, and we're, we're past weekend number three of NFL, NFL announcing a partnership with Betcris, an online book in Costa Rica, official partner in Latin America, NFL partners with Tab in Australia, and Major League Baseball partners with Betcris. They announced that back in July. Uh, big trend, uh, I think, uh, socially, Buffalo Wild Wings uh, announcing a mobile sports betting deal for the uh, Bet MGM app, and that's just in the states where uh, it's legal, New Jersey, Indiana, Colorado, West Virginia. But that leads us into, Andrew and Ari, bars and sports bars are hurting right now. Mobile betting is the place to be. Andrew, pick up on that. Well, 
Yeah, I, I mean, in many states, you can't even go into the bars or bars have to serve food to even be open. And so we're looking at almost a $30 billion industry that's projected to lose half of that just because they can't even be open. And that's bars and sports bars. You read the stories about the sports bars, especially around the stadiums, and they're just completely devastated. They're not getting any attendance at all. Um, it's you have to expect a lot of these sports bars aren't going to be able to reopen when fans are finally able to get back in the stands. Yeah, no wonder uh, Tennessee will go live with sports betting beginning November 1st, not that far off. All right, NFL. The NFL says the 3-0 and Titans and Vikings, both teams suspending in-person activities. They got this at the start of the baseball season, got it at the start of the basketball season. Titans had three players testing positive for the virus, along with five of their employees. Now, Titans beat Vikings this weekend in Minnesota uh, by a point to go 3-0. and um, Both teams are going to try to sort that out this week. They'll practice or gather away from their facility, shut down the facility. We don't know what that means for their games this weekend yet. But, Andrew, that leads us to... One thing in the NFL that we're going to do throughout the year. What is your one thing, please, about the NFL? Yeah, I'm going to follow up on my betting story of last week where we talked about a really big bet that went wrong. And I'm going to follow it up with a really big bet that went right. So a better in New Jersey placed a nearly $800,000 bet on the alternative over of 41.5 for the Miami and Jacksonville Thursday night football game. Um, 44 points were scored. He won. He won almost $300,000 on that single bet. Much better than the person who bet on the nearly sure thing and lost it all. Um, and it was clearly a good bet. He paid a little bit more money or reduced his odds, if you will, to drop the over because the standard line was 48. And he wouldn't have uh, cleared that with the game as it was played Thursday. Ari? Yeah, I, I uh, have a whole bunch of thoughts. I'm thinking with the uh, Buffalo, way back to the Buffalo Wild Wings, that, that's one of the things I think of is they always had this trivia games going on um, you know, across different bars. So you could be competing in New York against a team of people answering trivia in Chicago. So that was fun. But, um, you know, even living in Chicago, you walk by and, you know, I saw a funeral with only – like four people at the grave site, not mine, just as I was driving by. And then you go and you see indoors, bars are packed. Others at least smartly have televisions outside and they close the street outside. So that was like reasonably, you know, I would never do it, but you know, reasonably safe. Um, and, and, you know, back to the NFL um, and our three and O bears. Um, it, it, it's tough. You, uh, you know, to maintain, uh, the, this bubble, you know, at the MLB, uh, if you look at the last maybe uh, 45 days, there, there was like zero to just a handful of positive cases, like way better than the uh, typical, uh, you know, general population. Uh, but it, it's tough to do. And, um, you, know, you, I, you know, I do anticipate seeing more and more of this with larger teams and with more of a contact sport. That was, uh, Ari gave us NFL one plus one. It's like you, you just went to the free throw line over your shoulder. <laughs> you had the NBA court. You had two to make one or one plus one at the line. So And, and I missed. I missed one but got the rebound. <laughs> <laughs> quick. Very quick. Uh, my one thing is uh, Patrick Mahomes. Man, there's so much to talk about. This guy's brilliance. 32 touchdown passes in September, not one interception. That's a record for most consecutive touchdown passes in a month without an INT, and that's amazing. We'll close out the NFL guys with a, an ESPN poll last week. The Baltimore Ravens, John Harbaugh, and the Cleveland Browns. And Ari, that's uh, the guy behind the Browns, is uh, a guy that you know well from uh, baseball culture. The Ravens and Browns were one to the most analytic teams in the NFL. So Ari, who are we talking about here? Yeah, Paul D. Podesta, the yeah. Mr. Moneyball, one of the two subjects. And uh, yeah, he was, uh, you know, our, the first or one of the first publicly known analysts in the NFL. But it was so long ago, um, 
and other or other you know sports have seen so much success you would have thought uh, this would have happened a lot sooner uh, both teams you can't really base the analytics on the results in a short sample um, you know the talent has to come through but yeah both uh, have winning records so far um, and and for Baltimore that says a lot when I worked with the Orioles they did not win that much so 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 far so good but even if they lose you know that you have to look at it as a building process it could take many many years with analysts to build up the you know the right infrastructure questions and uh, you know on field staff and it looks like from that survey also guys it looks like uh, in the NFL they're still battling that the battle of the coach once the information may not implement analysts have information may not getting it into games so interesting uh, and in sports performance, the Seahawks were given high merit for their sports performance analytics, which means the training and off-field stuff, not necessarily game. Um, All righty, NBA Finals, Lakers and the Heat. Uh, Pat Riley has reached the finals in six decades as a player and coach and exec. He was a Laker player and coach. Uh, uh, that's just amazing. So. Andrew, if I've got, uh, oh gosh, let's say lunch money, $10 to put down on the Lakers. Are we saying Lakers in five? Are we okay there? Or Ari, do we go heat in an upset in seven? What do you got, Andrew? I'm going to go Lakers in six. I know, uh, again, the 538 had the heat as an overwhelming favorite uh, 75% of the time. Um, I know their ELO rating is much higher. They've knocked off some really good teams. They're playing really, really well right now. Um, I don't know how you stop Davis, though. So I have to go with the Lakers. Ari? Yeah, D- yeah. Davis and, and James combination is, is great. And you know, I've been watching you know, all of the games, and the Lakers are not perfect. They have been missing a lot of uh, throws, making a bunch of turnovers. Um, you know, they're, they're an incredible team. I don't want to take that away, but they are not a perfect team. These are humans. And, um, you know, LeBron James, when he was on fire to, to kind of close it out, um, I, I can't see anyone stopping it. So if he gets a couple spurts uh, every game, it, yeah, it could be five games, maybe six with the Lakers. Yeah, Ari, right, your uh, intuition serves you well. The way uh, LeBron played to close out those last two games, pretty tough really vintage things uh, happening there with him. Um, two notes before we close it out. Stanley Cup champ uh, Tampa defenseman Victor Hedman earns Conn Smythe Award for playoff MVP. Tampa claimed the cup four games to two over the Dallas Stars. In Edmonton, the bubble is over. They can all go and everybody around the Tampa area on water, on land, will get a chance to sip from Lord Stanley's Cup. That's fun stuff. We get to see video of that all over social as each of the players gets it for a day and uh looking ahead which we have uh, we've been so busy i mean gosh kentucky derby winner authentic uh installed nine to five morning line favorite for this weekend's preakness uh in uh, the baltimore area last of the triple crown races no fans allowed all right fellas time goes quickly because there's so much going on this sure has been fun uh, I want to go ahead and say goodbye from my partners, Ari and Andrew. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us for another week. We sure appreciate that. This is Double AI, the podcast on analytics and sports. We will see you next week.